watch it fall slowly. Frat girl still trying to get in. Haters mad for whatever reason. Smoke in the air, binge drink. You've just joined us midway through our mannequin challenge. Welcome to Swarf and Chips. So on today's show, we're joined by Ian Fenton from Ajax Machine Tools. Mark's off somewhere, so we'll be finding him. We're going to catch up with Colin a little bit later, but before we talk technology, I've had loads of messages through. We've got, so I'm just going to power through. Here so, we go. All good. Um, yeah, all good. So Peter from Rank Brothers says, um, he did start to watch the video. Um, he absolutely enjoys the shorter videos, but also watches a lot of water swarf and chips as well, which is quite positive. Then we've got Crawford. I don't know which company he's from but he says I watch all the videos that are added I find them very informative Paul you're gonna like the next one uh, Darren from Wilson Tools has written in saying I personally like the show as well as the website and the YouTube videos may I add Paul comes across Go very well I kept a close eye on the videos that interest me interest me mainly looking out for a machine that we can purchase next who's that from somebody Jones yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks, Dad. Yeah. Ken Jones, thanks, Dad. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what? We've got some selfies. This is this is awesome. I want you to send in your Christmas selfies. But we've got this one from the guys from Micron Subcon. Wow. Three unwise men. Oh, <laughs> don't be mean. That's what take that really gone downhill since Robbie Williams there. Good <laughs> grief. <laughs> is he got braces on? It's got braces stop on. It, so stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Don't be mean. No, no, They're no, all the beautiful. Mouth, on the, on the <laughs> His head's upside down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, okay, we want you on our Christmas show, so get your selfies into us using the details on screen, or also you can even tweet them. Oh, we want the funnier the better, don't we? Yeah. Of course we do. Christmas hats, bells, whistles. Stand in front of the lot. machine. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, you went to visit Mills CNC. You discussed service. I know service isn't something tangible, but long term, if they get it right, then there's the potential for future machine sales. You start by discussing service and servicing. What's the difference? Uh, it's an interesting question because I, I, I went into this uh, interview thinking exactly the same. And um, basically, Mills CNC have, set, have split their service department. So you've got servicing and service. And the reason behind it is it's kind of like pre and post sale. Once a machine's sold and it's installed, it needs continual support, maintenance, um, contracts that, that basically can keep the machine at its ultimate or deliver the ultimate in performance. So Mill CNC recognised that by having this as a kind of a merged service department, which a lot of machine tool companies have, it's not as good as actually splitting the two out and having a servicing centre, which is what John Roberts heads up. And he has had some brilliant success with this department. It's been running a number of years now, but it's allowed him to basically tap into the needs of his customers, make sure that machines that are in the field are maintained correctly. And if they're maintained correctly, if you've got a quality machine tool, which a Doosan is, you're gonna get a longer life out of it. And like you've correctly said, when they come to look at another machine, there's a likelihood they're gonna come back to you for more. If they get it right. So Mill since you've yeah, tapped it's, into it's that. It's a good point actually, because although you could argue the similar roles, the skill set is completely different. If you're installing the machine, it's completely different to a preventative maintenance plan. What, what it is, is it's no different to pre-sale when you've got a pre-sale applications team mm -hmm. and a post-sale applications team. You've got the guys that get involved in the, the quotation process and, mm -hmm. and the, the, you know, putting together turnkey proposals. And then you've got the ones that actually action it and, and commission those turnkeys once the machine is sold. So this is in some ways, it's a little bit of a similar environment, but they pride themselves on their service. And uh, to be fair to them, they've done nothing but succeed. You mentioned, you said it's not tangible. I can tell you if you get it wrong, you won't buy another one. That's you what know? I mean, yeah, is, if you get as, it right. If, as, if, if you put a machine in and you don't service it, it breaks down, you, you take three, four days to get there, you're not going to get another order at that customer. Mm. And you might come on to this, I'm not sure, but if I'm stealing your thunder, keep your do sound happy. Did you see yeah, that? That's what, yeah. yeah, that's that, that's their slogan, their statement. It's a and, smiley face. Yeah, it's a smiley face. Keep your do sound happy and your customer will be happy and so will Mill CNC. Mm. 600 UK wheel chuck. Now, if I'm quite honest, I'm surprised someone hasn't thought about this sooner. But, good point. Yeah, good point. But that's like any kind of invention, isn't it? You know, mm. you look at it and you think to yourself, hang on a minute, how comes... Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think of that one. Uh, you're quite novel, quite unique. Well, it is unique. Yeah. Uh, and it's 
you, you open and close the collet chuck by using the wheel, which Jonathan demonstrates there. So I suppose the benefit to this is that the security of the clamping, you can get good clamping forces by using the wheel action, and also you don't need external things like chuck keys. and. Because you could lose those, yeah. couldn't you? At the same like, time? I guess the manufacturers looked at a problem, they've come up with a solution, haven't they? And what's important to mention about this as well is that it doesn't matter what machine tool you've got, although 600 universe, UK are, and we can see him out here actually using the motion. I mean, it's dead simple. And because it, it's fixed there, everything is one integrated unit. Like you say, there's no potential of losing parts and all the rest of it. Good idea. Um, but it can fit to any spindle nose, so it doesn't matter what machine tool you've got. It doesn't have to be a Colchester. It doesn't have to be a Harrison. It can be any machine because they do specialise 600 UK in their work holding, in their chucks. We've done lots of videos uh, about their precision work holding, their small chucks, their special chucks. Great place to go and visit. They manufacture a lot of the stuff there, so you can kind of witness it all being made at the same time. But it is, um, it is good. Good invention. Yeah, good invention. Well, good facility as well. Yeah. Really good. Has how long has this UMC been in the market? Well, I would say roughly two years. It's Haas's first machine tool with an integrated table like this. Before, they've always been a bolt-on unit, haven't they? And this guy is a startup business, so they do motorsport plus a little bit of subcontract machine as well, and they are over the moon with this machine. Haas are really good at social media, and if it, there's not a week it doesn't go past where you see they've put another one of these UMC 750s in. Very, very popular machine, and you can see why. I think the thing is with this video as well is that when you develop a machine tool as a manufacturer, if it's a simple machine, a vertical machining center, you know, a two axis lathe, the technology is kind of in place and there's, there's not many complications and you're pretty much guaranteed, you, you know, you're going to have a successful machine or successful installations. When you start going towards five axis, you start going towards simultaneous five axis machining, getting the, the control compatible, getting, getting all of those elements right. It's, it's not so simple. Haas have gone into this uh, with their eyes wide open, developed a product here. And this is a great endorsement for them because this guy uh, was the second installation of the UMC 750 in the UK about two years ago. We went to see him specifically to find out how that two year period has been, whether, you know, what his thoughts are on it. He hasn't ever once had to have a Haas uh, service engineer come to site to, to fix or look at any problems with the machine absolutely over the moon with it uses it for full five axis simultaneous machining loves everything to do with the machine can machine plastics aluminiums steels loves the way you can access it get in it the swarf evacuation uh, although he looks quite nervous on camera <laughs> it's a very <laughs> glowing reference no, i think that's brilliant i think that's all really has need to have you know positive reviews two years on and like you said he's got more than one yeah, yeah, he's got four machines. So this machine shop now has got four machines within it. They've got a super mini mill. They've got uh, two turning centers, one with a Y axis. It's a Haas cell, loves all of the machines. And yeah, I mean, this, this is a, 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 big, a big thing for them, this UMC. And, and you mentioned accessibility. Up. That's one of the big things. It's a big machine, get a big, large, heavy component on there. But the access, accessibility is brilliant. And really one good. final point to mention, sorry, Lindsay, to cut across you, is the dynamic work shift. Mm. This is a big part of their software or their control. You can move a component to anywhere on the table and basically the, the, the software or the, the program inside will be able to know where the part is on the machine. Impressive. Watch on now, all I ever hear you saying is good quality, but good build quality. I've got a list here, you mentioned apparently the watch on's apparently 20% heavier than the competition. It improves rigidity, surface finish, deeper cuts, faster cycle times. You've got loads of really positive things to say about this company and machine tool. Paul? Yeah, I think that the one of the points you mentioned about the weight of the machine is important. It's, in fact, it's something I didn't know that they they claim their machines are they're heavier than the competition, and of course, with weight comes stability, as we know. <laughs> but oh, yeah, pop why kettle. is it always on so, you? So pop the machine the machine for machining harder materials, taking deeper cuts and things like that, is where the watch on machine sits. One of the things that I was also told is that they're the largest manufacturer or privately owned machine tool manufacturer in Korea, which is some claim in some state. It is, well. machines come out of there. It, it, it does. So we took a walk around this machine. In fact, we didn't go into detail on the video with it because it, it ended up going on too long. But just to look at the finish, uh, look at the way, even down to the way the door closes, the, the internals on the machine. It's a very be it's be a beautifully finished machine tool. And you tool. do see a lot of them in the UK, especially in the north of England, don't you? You do see a lot of them. 
yeah, they, for very, various applications, and they're, they're good. They can take a heavy cut, remove material fast. It's a, and, I, and I think the reason that we were looking at this machine as well is because they carry them in stock. If you go to Ward High Tech, you can see around the machines there, they carry a lot of machines in stock, whether it be lathes, turning centres, machining centres, you can see here. And, that, and they're very creative on finance as well. Which In stock? Any deals in that case if they're in stock? Yeah, the, the, in fact, this 200C is actually a machine that they've got in stock at the moment and on a deal before the end of the year. Okay, great news. Good time to buy a machine at the moment. Very good time. <laughs> lots of deals. Good. Always lots a good time. Yeah. And Mark went to visit Vericut. Now, I'm fully going to admit I don't know much about this company, so can you inform me and everybody? Yeah, Vericut, sorry, Paul. Uh, Vericut is anti collision software. So if you imagine you've got an expensive machine tool, you've got a CAD CAM, a seat of CAD CAM, you program offline, you pull it on the machine tool, and then there might be a collision. This is to eradicate that potential issue. So it basically animates and mimics your machine tool. So if there's not a crash on VeryCut, you're not going to get a crash on your machine tool. It does a lot more than that, but in essence, that's what it does. And the two areas, the two areas of importance there is one, the machine tool, because if you have a, yeah, a an accident with the machine, it can be very expensive, especially the types of machine tools that we're talking that the VeryCut software, software tends to be working in conjunction with high performance five axis machines. That's where it fits, and also then if, if you scrap work, that can be costly too. So it's those two elements. You know what? On their website, if you do go onto their website, and I think it talks about their latest releases, and this is Which the new is this, software, is and they've also got their own clip on the latest releases as well. So if you want finer detail, then that's perfect. And this guy's just joined them as a sales yep. engineer. Expanding, which is great. Yeah, oh yes. Right, okay, we're going to go see Mark. I don't know where he is, he's off somewhere. Thanks, Lindsay. I'm here, High Wycken, Herco, the Christmas open house. I've got Dave Waghorn, the MD. Dave, how's the show been? Very, very good so far, Mark. Yeah, excellent. We had about, um, I think about 30 people in yesterday, different customers, and we're expecting people across from um, Scotland, Ireland today. Um, so should be a really busy day. And is there any orders that you've taken from yesterday? We've taken a couple, yeah. I haven't actually seen the paperwork, but we shook hands on a couple. As I say, you, you'd normally judge how the show went by the end of December, and just from the numbers through the door and, and the general feeling, really, of, of what I'm hearing about the market and everything, I, I'd say it's going to be a good show. And I see you've got a number of partners here, probably more than I've ever seen. It's been very, yes, we, we've got lots of people. It's been a very busy show. Um, a few are here from the first time. We've, we've built up some really good relationships. Um, for the first time here today, I'd say um, Cromwell, we did a nice show with them early in the year. Zoller have got their height setters. The guys from Aroa are here. We're starting to sell a lot of pallet systems on our machines now, plus our normal partners, people like SGS, Kitagawa, um, Open Mind, Delcam, those kind of people are all here. It's, it's good. And, and how has sort of 2016 been, Dave? You know, in reference to machine tool sales, obviously a bit turbulent. What's your view? Yeah, it certainly started off challenging. I think it was quite quiet um, early 2016. Um, really, from Mac onwards, things seem to pick up. Towards the end of this year, it's got very busy. We, um, we've sold out of four or five of the models that we'd normally have in stock. The car park was completely full. I think that's a good sign. The warehouse is full. Everyone's very busy. We're paying service engineers to not take their holiday. and. The outlook for next year is good so far. And in reference to the machines, is there any sort of machines that stick out this year for you? There have been a couple I can think of. Um, the one I'm stood in front of, the um, VMX42 SRT, has been a real success. It's quite a unique five-axis machine. Um, you've got the swivel head um, and a rotary table, and you're able to get quite a large part and operate it um, very well, um, very quickly, very smoothly, and get good accuracy on parts. Um, it's got, yeah, it's got a few unique features you wouldn't see on a Trunnion machine. Um, another one is the VM5, which we launched in um, September. It's uh, smallest, lowest cost, entry level machine. I thought it would only be a sort of onesie, twosie seller, possibly a lead into other products, but um, we've took, taken 10 orders since the launch, and we're seeing a, a special sort of niche that it attracts certain people, very good for first time users, apprentices, people with very small operating areas. It's, it's, it's proven to be a very good 
very good product. Because I, I think uh, Paul uh, actually reviewed that machine, didn't he? Yes, we did a review in September. We did a launch along with uh, an Open Mind Day. Um, again, we had 50 people at that show. So, yeah, there seems to be a lot of general interest in the, um, I think subcontract machiners are doing well, and that's the kind of machine, if you've got a little bit of budget at the end of the year, it's the kind of machine that people like to buy. So quite a successful 2016. One question, 2017. Well, so far, it looks like it's going to be better. I can't, um, all I can do is keep my fingers crossed, I think. Um, but yeah, the first two or three months have been exceptional for us. The feedback from the open house is very good. Um, yeah, I've got all the same kind of concerns that I like to have. Is the building big enough? Have I got enough people on board? Have I got enough machines available to sell? All the nice things that I like to worry about. So hopefully it'll be a good year. Well, actually, to sum up, it's not a bad problem to have, is it, Dave? No, no, very happy. <laughs> Thanks very much for your time, Dave. OK, cheers. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Mark. Welcome to the show, Ian from Ajax Machine Tools. Right, Ian, your company do nearly every single machine I can think of. We've got drilling, grinding, boring, shaping, slotting, sawing, and sheet metal machines. You do absolutely everything, don't you? We do like to cater for a, a big chunk of market, yes. <laughs> you do. We do. Today we're going to be discussing just a couple of machines with great deals, particularly a turning machine, and you've got a price from £16,995. That's a brilliant price. I'm sure everyone's going to be interested in this. What machine are we talking about? We're talking about a CNC machine as well. It's a CNC stroke manual machine and it's a, a teach lathe so you can do um, this one manual machine here. what's the model it's a evolution ultra turn 200 where you've got Fagor 8037 fully conversational control a four station automatic tool post on it uh, at the price that you've just mentioned there at under 17,000 pounds we, we I looked at reviewed this machine uh, with yourself I think going back about a year or so ago but there's been it's some different machine. Yeah. Oh, it is, is it? But yeah, so, yeah. so what's the differences between what we looked at and this one? It's been updated, uh, basically. It's a new design, new ergonomic design for uh, 2017. Um, the controls have been update, updated. We, we formerly only had a 808 control from Siemens. We've now got the Fagor 8037. And it's now got a four-station automatic turret as standard, whereas before it was with a quick-change tool post. When you say ergonomic, then what's the changes in the uh, in the ergonomicness, if there is such a word? It's mainly aesthetic. I've got to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry. He didn't really have a good word there either. Well, no, I, I, because I remember when we did look at the machine we looked at at the time, it was a, a new model, and I know you were having a lot of success with that. So they've obviously tapped into that and then made some even more. Uh, different developments to take it to the next level too. Well they have yeah and uh, it's a lot of it is to do with how they manufacture machines they're making an awful lot of machines um, out in the Far East um, where we're tapping into that market that they're supplying. I'd be interested to know more about that Fagor control tell us about that because that's obviously a, a big element of, of... Yeah the Fagor control is if you know Fagor at all it's a Spanish manufactured control it's been around for, for 30, year, 30 odd years um, they've sold thousands and thousands of controls it's probably the fourth biggest out of what i call industry standard controls because you've got fanex siemens heidenheim and possibly fagor as the next one and um, it's a fully conversational control so you've got all of the can cycles are already in there so if you have no cnc knowledge whatsoever you can teach people to use a cnc machine actually leading on from that ian because <coughs> instantly my personal first thoughts on this machine you're going to be talking about training it's going to be geared toward apprentices are these really the only markets we're talking about or is there more is there potential for more here the market for this machine is, is potentially anywhere and it's yes you quite rightly say universities and colleges which because it's simple to operate and it's got both it's cnc yeah, and yeah. manual yeah it has and it's the next step up from the manual machines which the kids are being taught on as well um, but also any machine shop can have one. Um, Fred in his shed, one man ban, all the way up to the blue chip companies. And what, why are you saying blue chip companies here? Well, blue chip companies can have tens of hundreds of thousands, millions of pounds worth of machinery, um, but sometimes you, they still want to do one offs, two offs, ten yeah. offs, and you wouldn't want to set up a 200,000 pound machine for doing ten it's pieces. It's very capable. I'm going to have to stop you there. We've got to discuss milling. That was the second machine. 
Yes, we've got a brand new machine out to market for us as well. It's a, a meter CNC bed mill. Um, it's a meter in x-axis, 500 in the y-axis. Um, we've been very successful with the smaller machines, so we've brought out a new one to market as well. And you have a video which will be coming out from yourselves, which is showing us laser calibrating a machine. Um, it's a CNC bed mill. And normally they're taken out of a box and they're put into a company. Um, we actually fit all the controls, the CNC and the electrics in the UK. So it's officially a UK built machine. And we calibrate it, laser calibrate it as well. And we were showing one which was being laser calibrated to sub 5 micron. That's the machine there, and I noticed this, this Heidenhain control that you've got on here. One thing that was interesting for me is the difference between the analog and digital. Uh, going back to, to selling machine tools, it was always a big thing to push digital technology, but we have a different slant on this, don't we, here? Yeah, I mean, machine? this is a funny anal fully analog machine. Um, digital is great. Digital gives you speed and it gives you connectivity to everything else. Um, this is a CNC mill. It's not a, a machining centre. Again, it's geared to the, the low volume market. You wouldn't buy one of these if you wanted to do thousands of a component, but you'd do it if you wanted to do one off, five off, ten off. Um, and the digital technology is no advantage whatsoever. In fact, it can be a, a hindrance because it's uh, possibly not quite so much now, but was never as reliable as the analogue. It's, uh, it's not broke, don't fix it. Mm. Anything in the industry you wanted to discuss as well? Uh, well, it, the things that we're, we're very busy. We're still very busy. We've had a, um, a quiet summer and it's picked up again. Um, we've had an open house up in Stockport at our Successful. northern agent. Yeah, it's been very good. In actual fact, we got an order for, uh, through today for uh, another machine, which will be three from the show. Um, from a small company, that's, that's good. And we'd expect another couple more from it as well. Um, the, these the, guys, uh, <coughs> noon, noon machine tools. What happens if you want to buy a machine in the morning? <laughs> Are we going to keep this? Are we going to keep this? I love it. Let's keep going. Come on. <laughs> well, you can, you can have one morning, noon and night. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Okay. Was there an, any no, more? No, no, to no. That? So, so <laughs> Noon Machinery Services, they're, they're, they're the agent for you in the north of England, aren't they? They are indeed, yeah. They're based in Stockport, which is where Ajax originated from. Um, and they've been very successful for us at the minute as well. Yes, they're, they're sending a lot of machines for us. And one of, one of the things that's interesting I find in the industry at the moment is people t are talking the economy down in a lots of ways. And I know you're going to come on to this with the press. And actually, things are quite good for yourselves at the moment from other machine tool suppliers. How do you see the fact that you you are selling into the, the the low medium end when it comes to price? Is that is that correct? Well, yes. We're when we come into the the price of the market at the minute, uh, everybody knows the exchange rates have fallen. It's good for exporters, but all us machine tool people import. So at the end of the day, everybody's got to put the prices up. Um, but the difference in price between a low cost machine that we're selling and the and a fifty sixty thousand pound machine is obviously a bigger gap, so the gap gets bigger. So the, the, the small, less value machines are even better value. Everyone's got a target market, haven't they, at the end of the day? So, look, before we finish up, have you got anything else that you want to finish off with or add from Ajax? Well, I mean, the thing about the economy is people keep talking about the economy and Brexit and, and everybody likes a bad news story. Everybody wants to put it down all the time. There's a couple of stories recently, the one for Nissan. Um, they're building a new model here, they've got the confidence to invest in the UK and all everybody wants to know all over the newspapers and, and on the TV is how has the deal been done? It doesn't matter, it's been done, mm -hmm. so it's great for the, for the country but we should be celebrating that. Thank you so much for joining us, Ian, as well. And of course, if anybody wants to get a machine from Ajax Machine Tools, you can contact them directly on the details on the screen. Thank you. Right, what a show. Now, the reason I cut the guy short there was because over the next few weeks, we're going to have different shows coming up. One is going to be entirely dedicated to deals within the industry. We're also going to have a special show dedicated to the engineering technology group. And we will have the MD here in the studios, Martin Doyle. Now, as you know, Christmas is coming up, so we want your Christmas selfies. You can tweet them to us or contact us on the details on the screen. You can always watch the previous episodes and by clicking the links on the screen here. And as we always say, keep those spindles turning.
Jonesy. Hello? Colin, yeah, just a quick call, mate. We forgot to include you in Swarf and Chips this week. So we need to get you in it. What are you going to do? Uh, yeah, tricky one, Paul. I've asked all my engineers, but they're all really busy. They're all in the run-up to Christmas, machining, turning it, everything like that. So I haven't been, I'm not able to get anybody in this Friday, I'm afraid. Is that because they don't want to see you? Uh, a little bit rude, but no, all busy. All right, well, we need, we, we need to do something. Maybe we set you a challenge or something. You know, challenge? What can you do? What, like challenge anarchy, you mean? Brilliant, that's a great idea. And I'll tell you what, take Joff with you. He does very little around here. Hmm? Did you get all that all right? Thank you, and I think I look cracking. Anna Carice apart, does my bum look big in this? Don't answer that, oh, thank you. Thank, a big thank you to Lee CyberScience for sorting this out so quickly. We're off, go and see some engineers. Helicopter's been grounded, so I've had to drive. Traffic has been dreadful, but we're here. First stop, Bedford CNC, so let's get going. So, first one, Hass SL20 fixed head lathe, 10 station tools, 500 between centres, 280 swing, if you need any work done, bars up to two inches wide diameter, then get in contact with Andy, he likes his bespoke work, but also batch runs. Then, we've got the Bridgeport BMC 500 mil, 500 bed, 400 wide, any milling work you need doing, again, the bespoke work, Andy is a real craftsman, so get in contact. Right, let's go to the car. Get in the car, get in the car. Right, right. All right, where now? We're going to see Sharon at JNS Precision Engineering, so let's go. Let's do it. Uh, where have you been? I went to go get breakfast. We haven't got time for breakfast, Joff. We've got to crack on with this. Anyway, JNS Precision Engineering. Fortunate we got here because they've just had delivery of their Hass VF3SS, huge great mill, 24 plus one tool station, five axis, bed 1.2 by 800 by 700, so a massive envelope. These guys do like bespoke batch runs, smaller batch runs, specializing in things like paper slitting, electronics, and odd shaped components, such as this little thing here. Anyway, enough of that, on with the next one. Come on, Joff, and no more breakfast. Joff, come on, hurry up. Right, we are now at GT Engineering. These guys, as I said, are very, very busy, but they've just taken delivery of four Hass machines, two mini mills, super mini mills, and two VF2s. These guys specialize in industries such as aerospace. They're about to get their AS9100 aerospace accreditation. They like the tricky, intricate parts and also the tricky materials, so this, ASM 29 stainless. Tricky part to work on, but this is what they really enjoy. So if you've got anything like that, get in contact. Right, Joff, are you ready now? Right, let's go. We've just left Holford Synergy and some of their companies. We're now running out of time, so we're off to Tall Engineering in Kettering. So let's park up and get inside. Oh, hold on, Joff. Don't call me Mike. Right, so let's see what these guys have got. Here, you've got a cracking mill, the XYZ 1060 HS, 24 tool station, through spindle coolant, huge envelope, one meter by 600 by 640. These guys love a challenge. Any sort of material will plow through at 12,000 RPM. So you've got aluminiums, your brasses. They're even working on some steel armor plating at the moment. Examples of what they do, looks like a bit of turning, but in fact, small batch run, 10 ops, nice bit of work. And again, sorry Joff, looks like a bit of turning, but inside you've got some oil grooves there, so that's been milled as well. 
great bit of example of work. Now let's go and have a look. They've also got a lathe, which has got a little bit of spare capacity. The XYZ compact turn, 52. 12 station, nice bar there, 52 mil, two inch. Oh, actually, I've told it's 50.8 mil, if you want to be exactly right. Now they've invested in a couple of tools, knurling and broaching. So small batch runs, large batch runs, bit of turning, get in contact with these guys. I think we're running out of time. So Joff, get back to the office. Let's go. It's been a long morning, but we've had a crack in time. We've seen some great engineering companies. So if you want to promote your capacity or your engineering company, mtd.network, I am then going back in to MTD Towers. Paul, Paul. Oh, hang on, Dave. Yeah. Uh, we finished the challenge. We weren't really going to do that. I was only joking. <laughs> Sorry, Dave, carry on.